In this bass lesson, you're going to learn three tricks to learn all the notes on your bass and master your bass fretboard. And this is especially for you bass players who don't have a lot of time. Hi, I'm Luke from Become a Bassist, and if you want a quick hack for getting started learning all the notes on your fretboard, keep watching. <laughs> One thing that a lot of people do when they try and learn all the notes on their bass is trying to learn all the notes at once. Now this is great if you've got a decent amount of time and a little bit of patience. In fact, if you're starting to get serious about your bass playing, this is actually what I recommend for you. Learn all the notes really, really well. Yeah, take the time, do it right. But a lot of us just don't have that kind of time, right? We can't spend dedicated hours learning the intricacies of our fretboards, but we still need to be able to get by. So what can we do? Well, I've got three tricks to get you started learning your fretboard, even if you don't have tons of time to do it. So let's get to it. The first trick, instead of trying to learn all the notes at once, learn them one at a time. Yeah, when I think about it, this is actually how I started learning my own fretboard. I knew what the open strings were from reading tabs, but the actual frets, I had no idea. <laughs> so what did I do? I started by learning my very first note. It was this G right here. Yeah, I didn't even think about any of the other notes. All that I knew was that this was G, the very first dot on my E string. Anytime someone mentioned a G chord or a G note, in my mind I was like, I know where that is. <laughs> it's right there, right there, third fret on the E string right there. I don't really know why I picked G to learn first. Uh, it was probably because the terrible high school garage band I was in played a lot of songs that used G chords. But for some reason, I just made it my mission to hang on to that very first note, my third fret on that E string, that G, my G. <laughs> and after a while, I was pretty confident with knowing where that G was. So I made the decision to consciously learn another note. Yeah, just one more note. Uh, I didn't want to confuse myself by learning the third fret on any other string, so I, th I'd I thought I'd learn the fifth fret on my A string. Why this one? Because once again, a lot of the songs my crappy band was playing, they were using this note, a D. So now I had two notes that I knew, <laughs> getting dangerous. Not exactly groundbreaking, but it did lay the groundwork. The takeaway here is that you don't need to go hard and learn all the notes at once. In fact, you can get started with just one note. If you find yourself playing songs that rely heavily on uh, just one note, then make it your mission to learn what that note is and really commit it to memory. Then, when that's sorted, move on to the next, and then the next, and then the next. Eventually, you will have learned all of them. Really, I just kept following this process myself until I started recognizing patterns within the geometry of the fretboard, and that is trick number two. If you learn the notes on your E and your A strings, check this out, then you've automatically learned them on the D and the G. Now how is this? Well, check it out. If you know uh, that this note here is a G, then you can quickly and easily find the same note, that same G, on your D string. Now it won't be the exact same note, but it'll be the same note in a different register, in an octave up, yeah? All you need to do is from the note you're on, move over two strings, and then two frets in this direction right here. So if we start here, move two strings over, so one, two, and then two frets in this direction, one, two, we get another G. Oh, pardon me. This is the same note we started on, just in a higher register. Low G, high G. Low G, high G, low G, high G. Yeah? Now the best part about this is that this pattern repeats all over your bass. If you know any note on your E or A string, you can find those same notes on your D and G strings. If you know that this is a B right here, second fret on your A string, then you can find that same note, that same B, on your G string. So you go two frets over, one, two, and then two frets in this direction, one, two, low B, high B. Yeah? Uh, if, this, uh, if this is a D flat right here, then two strings over, and two frets in this direction, one, two, will be the same D flat. If this is an F, down here, uh, then this is an F. A flat here, A flat there. B flat here, B flat there. E here, E there, yeah? By the way, this works in reverse as well. If you know a note on the D or G strings, you can find that same note on the E or the A. Yeah, if you know that this, uh, this is an F, you can plug the pattern in, but in reverse. So you move two strings in the other direction and then two frets in this direction. Yeah, so from here, two strings over and then two frets in this direction, one, two. 
Yeah? High F, low F. There you've got your F right there. As long as your bass is in a standard tuning, this pattern will hold across your entire fretboard, which essentially means that you're cutting your learning time in half. I remember when I discovered this, I was so excited. I wanted to use this in all my bass lines. So basically everything turned into an octave bass line. Uh, something like this. It would turn into this. <laughs> something like that. Everything in octaves. Uh, by the way, an octave is just the name of this interval, the distance between the notes that this little trick gives you. So, we've just cut your learning time in half, and with this next little trick, number three, we're going to cut it even further. When you combine this trick with the first two, you'll blaze through learning your fretboard. And this, is, this one is all about how sharps and flats work. Now you may have heard people talk about sharps and flats and been a little bit confused. I'm, I know I definitely was at the start, but it's actually very, very simple. Now sharps raise notes by one fret, flats lower them. For example, if you have a note like this G, my G, <laughs> and you say G sharp, you take this note and you take it up one fret, from the third fret to the fourth fret. Now this is G sharp. Simple, yeah? Now uh, it makes sense. Now if you take that same G where, where we were before, and we want to find G flat, all you do is take it down one fret, so from the third to the second. Again, simple. This means if you know just one note, uh, in my case it was, a, it was a G, then you actually, you really know where three notes are. There's the note itself, plus the sharp, and then the flat of that note. So if you know G, you automatically know where G flat was, plus G sharp. This happened to me when I only knew uh, that one note, and then once I learned my second note, D, I automatically knew where D flat and D sharp was as well. That's six notes. G flat, G, G sharp, and then D flat, D, D sharp. Now there are only 12 individual notes in, in kind of most music, <laughs> and by learning just two of them, we've actually learned half of them. Yeah, how cool is this? That being said, there are two places where this doesn't work. Two places where uh, sharps and flats just kind of don't exist. The first is between the notes B and C. No sharps or flats in between them. And also uh, between E and F. No extra notes in between them. So if you're on this E right here, and you want to go up to the next note, instead of being an E sharp, it's actually an F, not an E sharp. If you're on this F and you want to go down, the note uh, below is actually an E, not an F flat. And the same thing happens between B and C. Uh, if you're on this B, you might be tempted to call the next note up, one fret up, a B sharp, but it's actually just called C. And if you're on this C right here, third fret, and you want to play the note below it, you might want to call it C flat, but it's actually a B. Remember, no sharps or flats between E and F, and also B and C. Now, all these notes that quote unquote don't exist, E sharp, F flat, B sharp, and C flat, they actually do exist, but only in very, very specific and kind of esoteric circumstances that honestly, you won't really need to worry about. I've never consciously thought about any of these notes like this in my entire life, so I'm sure you'll be fine. Now, bit of a warning. This is where people can get tripped up when it comes to learning your bass fretboard. It's very, very easy to get confused, then overwhelmed, then frustrated, and then give up. Then when someone tells you to play specific notes, you still end up searching around or asking what fret on what string it is. But I do have a solution for you. It's called the ultimate guide to learning your bass fretboard. And if you wanted to get a little bit serious about learning your fretboard, or the tricks for learning aren't cutting it, then I definitely recommend you check it out. It's 100% free to get. All you have to do is click the link in the description, sign up on that page, and I'll send it straight to you, and you can be on the path to fretboard mastery in less than 60 seconds. To recap though, you learnt three tricks that you can use to master your fretboard if you don't have a ton of time. You learnt that just focusing on one note at a time can be very helpful, and you learned a geometric trick that if you know a note on your E or A string, you can move over two strings, move two frets, find that same note. Now this one trick can cut your learning time in half, and finally you learned about sharps and flats, which can further cut your learning time. Sharps bring notes up by one fret, flats bring notes down by one fret. 
Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate you staying all the way until the end. Uh, make sure and download that ultimate guide to learning your base fretboard. It'll take everything you've learned here and really kind of elevate it, take it to the next level. I'm Luke McIntosh from Become a Bassist and I'll catch you soon. Oh,